Hey guys, Elite Legionario here. Today I'm bringing you a 2 versus 2 for Rome Total War. And this, I, me and my ally will both be in command of Macedon. His name is QQQQQQ. So six Qs there, or seven Qs rather. I'm just going to call him Q, like Bond. Um, anyway, we'll be facing Durandal, who is Egypt, and the great Mike the Great One, who is also Egypt. So Macedon versus Egypt. Um, naturally, when I saw them pick Egypt in the lobby, um, I went for a thin cavalry force, um, which is only two units of hidden light lances up here, which I'm going to use to spring out to catch some of his archers if they become undefended. I brought six units of gold gold royal pikemen, three units of gold gold phalanx pikemen, three Cretan archers gold attack, and a gold attack regular, no two gold attack regular archers. So that's me, so usually when I'm up against Egypt I don't bring heavy care force because I anticipate chariots. Um, my ally didn't seem to do the same thing, but it doesn't really matter because neither of our, ally, our opponents brought like chariots in big numbers or any chariots at all in some cases. So you can, his army consists of what looks to be uh, five units of gold gold royal pikemen and six units of gold gold um, or silver gold companion cab and some regular standard archers, about three or four of those. So um, we deployed together, they deploy really far apart, so we're going to go out and get rid of this guy closest to me, Durandal, he's the closest to us, so we'll kill him first. So I'm going to move my men to position, I'm just going to skirmish with him. I'm going to have my um, standard archers up front and my accretions in between my uh, royal pikemen and my standard phalanx pikemen, so they're well protected. So um, he's going to lose. He's going to keep trying to go after my guys, but I'm just going to let him see if he can draw him right in. And he'll come into my pikes, but uh, as you can see, it routes him anyway. So um, they took quite a lot of damage to my um, my to my Cretan archers. So what I want to do with these guys is once he sort of gets fully engaged with me, I'm just going to um, tip them out and come in and knock out whatever archers he might have. His army consists of, it was a strange build, um, they told me they didn't know how to use e what was a good build for Egypt, and they thought, they didn't know if Egypt was very good, but of course Egypt is very good if you know what to use. Um, his army consists of six units of gold, gold by the looks, um, Nile spearmen, which are not very good phalanxes. Looks like he's got six units of gold, gold on there, yeah, gold, gold, um, desert axemen and several Nile Cav. So, um, yeah, this is... and a couple of uh, Camel Archers. Um, ultimately, um, what this tells me is he's just not familiar with Egypt. I mean, it's... Egypt is one of that kind of faction that, in a lot of ways, is even worse than Rome. Um, um, certainly capable of, of... definitely the second strongest faction, um, if not the first in some cases. Um, it can defeat a Roman army quite decisively if you know what you're doing. But um, chariots just murder, and like um, desert axemen can be very deadly. And Pharaoh's bowmen are are absolute given in most situations. Um, so over here, um, Malai gets a little over over as Alice and only sends in some of his companions, and he's not going to kill as many of these Niles um, as he would have liked. Um, and he's just setting up a front against the Egyptian down here, but most of the fight will take place on my terms. So now I see these guys come up here, so I was thinking I might have had to have sprung that trap, but fortunately I don't have to. Um, and I'm willing to just skirmish away with them for a while, um, thin out his cav and his um, desert axemen basically. Not that I think any of his infantry is a threat to mine. Um, like I said, um, I really expected probably like four chariots, four, four standard Egyptian chariots, two missile chariots, maybe some desert cav, um, some pharaoh's bowmen, but uh, I, was, I was definitely expecting that from both of them, um, which is why I've brought such a pike heavy army with um, long range Cretan archers to assist in battling his um, his what I would what have perceived to be his chariots. Um, I told my ally not to bring too many companions, but he did. Um, I don't, I'm not sure why. Um, ordinarily, I would never advise many cavalry when dealing with um, a Egyptian army. In all honesty, unless you're very good with them and can micro a lot, but uh, they'll just get munched up by chariots, and in most cases, they'll get pretty bashed up too by desert cav if they got them. So he does get my um, light archers. I was hoping to actually snag him on my pikes, and I do to a certain extent. So I'm willing. 
to trade them off to those cavalry units makes a decisive gives me a decisive edge um, basically if it nullifies cav he can't really do much but uh, his infantry is just absolutely no match for my royal pikemen and I have a secondary line um, of phalanx pikemen I was sort of thinking of um, the battle of Galgamela where Alexander actually um, although they weren't prop the big, big Macedonian Sarissa armed um, um, pikemen they were still the stand the old standards but um, they were the reserve line um, that Alexander had at Galgamela so um, when he got outflanked um, his reserve line could just come in and um, basically deal with the outflanking force so um, I was thinking of that when I did this so um, I just lacked the obviously, obviously the massive cavalry wing but of course as I said against Egypt it's not really worth it in my opinion so um, I was again I was waiting for him to abandon um, some of these um, units, but he's not actually, there's not really a lot, or just a hammer and anvil basically, but there's not actually really any archers at all um, that he was fielding. Strange force indeed for Egypt, um, very strange. Um, again though, they told, they, they, they were telling us that they just didn't know how to use Egypt. Um, like I've said though, Egypt is that kind of faction that's just absolutely devastating. So I'm bringing my men up. Um, my, sh my creations are well shielded by my second line of phalanx pikemen. Now phalanx pikemen um, are useful in this role, but I wouldn't really use them that often in a frontline situation because they're simply not, um, not nearly. They're not really good mor morale-wise. I wouldn't. I'd say. And I did lose a few men making that wee run over there. Basically, I just wanted to position him. Um, as you can see, by steadily working, I'm getting better height. So he's going to come in, um, and I'm just going to turn my pikemen around. Um, and that will be the death of his cavalry. Um, by this point, though, um, when he pulls out, um, he's going to be receiving a whole lot of arrows from my Cretan archers by this point, and which point, when he's weak enough, I'll bring my own cavalry and finish him. But uh, so at this point, the companions come out, um, Q's companions come in anyway. Um, and just to be sure he can win, even though he is winning, um, I will spring my guys as well. So as you can see, I've completely basically uh, tilted the battlefield in my favour and now I have the height advantage pretty much um, I like to do that, I like to try and um, out position my allies, I mean opponents if I can help it so down here as you can see they're just forming a front basically um, this, this guy's gone with a much more missile heavy army um, um, ultimately this army looks a lot better, it's got some chariots in it um, but they do use Nile Cav, not not Desert Cav. Um, Nile Cav would appear to have better stats, but um, they're not nearly as effective as um, as Desert Cav. Um, but Desert Cav would make great combination Cav with uh, with with chariots. It's really good. So he start, decides to retreat. Um, which is interesting because it's just going to make it even easier because he's going to go further and further downhill. So in a moment, um, first I was sort of getting flank shots wherever I could, but in a moment I will um, go after him. Here my ally makes a bit of a blunder and charges into these Nile spearmen. Strange decision. Um, but I decide while well, there's a distraction here and his forces are all muddled and disorganised, I'm going to rush down with my phalanx pikemen and I'll get the pikes into formation um, and that will be the destruction of much, if not all, of these Nile spearmen very quickly. All my creations have a good time with them. I'm not concerned about these caves, they'll just rout pretty much right away. This is general too, actually. Um, as you can see though, um, he's getting pretty easily bashed up and my, my pikes are not having any trouble at all making short work of him here. Um, and here's my guys coming on the flank, even though those companions probably weren't doing enough anyway. Um, but that pretty much destroys Durandal's um, Egyptian army. Pretty much flat out. Um, no match, really. Um, strange choice of units, but again, he just said he didn't really know what what was a good Egyptian army build. But um, usually, um, I don't like to go chariots that often, but I do occasionally just for some fun. But um, they are pretty overpowered and annoying kind of unit, in my personal opinion. 
um, if I were to use, you've probably seen in my previous videos, and that's just Steam, someone's trying to contact me, um, but in my previous videos, when I used Egypt, I like to just go with sort of like regular bowmen, pharaohs, guards, and desert, desert axemen, tossing maybe a missile chariot or a camel, um, stuff like that. If I really want to try myself, I'll use Nile, Nile Spearman. But um, infantry-wise, Egypt's not that great. It's okay, it's enough to hold, what, and it's, but skirmishing-wise, it's the best. In my opinion, Egypt's the best skirmishing faction in the game. Pontus probably second. Um, it depends on your style of skirmish, though. There's more than one way of skirmishing. But um, I would say Egypt was the best skirmisher out there. Um, so now I'm bringing over my raw pikemen to line up here next to him. Send my phalanx pikemen and light lance to deal with these regrouped desert axemen and Nile spearmen. Um, so that shouldn't be too difficult. And that's basically just a router unit of um, bowmen here. I don't think you have many of those. So yeah, my ally... Um, Probably a wee bit reckless with this cavalry, in all honesty. Um, um, things like this, what he's doing now. But um, needless to say, he did support though, and that is important. I've a lot of a lot of um, been doing a lot of battles of late, um, both on this and medieval two, and a lot of people just they're not um, not supporting, and they're not you know like um, sometimes I'm running into players who are inexperienced, if you will. But they won't, still don't like listen to your advice. Not that I'm a pro or anything, but I've been playing both the games long enough to understand what units are good where and, and that sort of thing. Um, and people are not are just not listening. You know, if I give them some ideas or advice, so it's a bit frustrating to be honest. But um, this guy was really good. He he did listen for the most part, and he was helpful. So I'm on my way. And that deals with the Rand Elf's forces completely, so it could go to him. And um, uh, the his ally, or rather, um, Mike the Great one, is retreating up to this hill. Um, don't have a problem with it really because he is on his own now. Um, big mistake on their biggest mistake on their part is okay they didn't have the best army build this guy has a better army build for Egypt but they um, formed up so far away from one another um, now it doesn't necessarily mean you have to form together in two versus two but um, I advise it because you can quickly um, come to one another's aid and in certain situations in some situations like this one you can quickly knock out one opponent before the other can actually come in to assist so um, it has its uses um, it has its users to do that. So, um, I like to try and do that. I like to work closely with my allies. Um, which is why um, in several games I've, I've lost solely because my ally has actually, in a lot of ways, ruined it for me. Um, because they just won't support me. Whereas the other team's allies are working to, other team is working together well. And the, I mean, the team that works together is always going to win. Um, it's just the way it goes um, on the online capacity. Um, but, but fortunately, most people do listen to you. I mean, okay, the language barrier can be a problem if you're playing with someone who doesn't understand. Um, the one that frustrates me the most, though, is when you, t you like, communicate to someone and you talk to them and they just don't respond to you at all. Um, whether they don't know how to use the talk key, I don't know, or, or they just choose to ignore you. Um, and even you give them some advice when they're playing, um, or you know, have a plan with them, and they just don't communicate with you. So, um, and that always kind of messes me up too, because I like to go on the offensive when I play, for the most part, um, depending on the situation. But I generally like to go on the attack and seize the initiative as soon as possible. But um, in a two vs two, you don't want to do that on your own um, if your ally is not willing to do it. Which means you've got to play defensively to keep with them um, in most cases anyway, and that can be a real pain as well, because they usually. Um, really stint, uh, they kind of stint my style of play, I guess. Um, although, then again, when I, I mean, I, I make an exceptions for new players, because um, obviously they don't have the experience, but those players who are older, um, you know, experienced, but still won't listen or won't cooperate or work together with people, that can be pretty frustrating. But anyway, enough of that. Um, so yeah, we're just steadily making our way over. And, um, 
It's been actually, by the time, I haven't been doing a lot of Rome Total War battles. Um, even though I've been uploading a few, there's ones that I've had ready to upload for a while. Um, I've been playing more Medieval 2 at the moment, um, which I'm enjoying a lot. Um, big differences between Rome and Medieval is uh, infantry, I think, are more, more effective in Rome, um, and cavalry are more effective in Medieval 2. I'm um, not to say that they aren't, both units ain't effective in these games, perspectively, they're just, um, and particularly Medieval cavalry can just devastate infantry. Um, but um, I'm really enjoying Macedon at the moment. Um, always, I've always enjoyed them, but um, I've gotten a lot, I think I've gotten better at them. Um, and more successful with them. I think, you know, with Cretan archers, they're always really, really handy. Um, I always bring them if I'm the Greek city-states, and usually if I'm massed on, depending on how many cav I've got. And if, in a game like this, where I don't have too many, I will bring them. Uh, I've also sort of been mucking around with some mods and stuff, um, sort of campaigning away on them, but, um, again, there's no one to really play on mods, which is a bit unfortunate, but, um, Actually, I might just trip to speak, guys, because this is going to take ages otherwise. Um, but um, on yeah, on the mods, I mean, I really like all the new units and stuff, and the new like battlefields and factions and, and territories, just all that. But um, there's just not enough um, people who've got them. I mean, I have quite a few mods, but um, and I like quite a lot of them. But I'll just get back now. So um, we're moving in. I mean, he's sort of coming down undecided about what he's doing, really. Um, good archer force here. He could have been quite devastating with, with Egypt if he had a good mixture of chariot archers and um, desert cabin chariots. Um, could have been one of those real tough Egyptian skirmish armies. Um, I can't recall, I can probably can't even count the many times I've lost to those battles, lost to those armies. Um, they're just devastating. Um, but I mean, chariots can be a real pain. I suppose like, like they're really effective. Other times they're really easy to kill. It's it's kind of strange. So um, these royal pikemen, nicely in order, looking very fancy and everything. And the lances. These guys are really good. Um, they have a charge of nine, which is the same as companions and cataphracts. So that's pretty sweet. Obviously, um, in the melee fighting, they're not going to be nearly as good. But uh, if you could just, they can actually make a really big difference when you charge them into a fight and then just pull them out and then bring in your other cavalry. Um, they can be really deadly that way. I prefer to use them up in a sort of mixture role of mopping up archers, um, hammer and anvils. Um, Adding support to cav fights, so sort of kind of an all uh, sort of all round light cavalry, um, a useful light cav unit. Um, I rather like them to be honest. Um, very cool. So uh, we're now in range, um, and as you can see, um, I decided to reorganise my line again, but I do actually lose a few royal pikemen in it. But um, as this has happened, um, his men are undefended, so I'm going to kill them all with my. Um, my light lance, which do take a few casualties. Um, as you can see, these guys are like gold, gold, and experience or two experience. They've got quite a lot of stuff. So over here, um, he's going to try and draw to the um, retreat, um, and I kill them. And I'm going to kill these guys as well. Um, so my light, my light lances are going to have a nice little um, tally, I think. I rather like them. As it's been happening. Um, the other Egyptian missile units being attacked by the companions, which is um, being probably a bit more effective than me. Um, but at this point I see his uh, pikes are coming in, so I'm going to rush my raw pikemen up. But I've still got my reserve line here with my phalanx pikemen. But I've got my Cretans firing as well. But um, yeah, he didn't seem to have guard his archers all that well here. Um, here's some more of these Nile okay. These guys are kind of cool. But um, I was actually thinking about Egypt the other day. Um, about how they're so like you know like pretty poorly represented in terms of like they were pretty Greek really you know being part that they were the Ptolemy Empire which of course um, came from Alexander's um, same lineage well not lineage but you know same grouping or or people um, and fought in that same style but um, and this just sort of fought more like how you how you'd read about them in the Bible um, or something like that. Um, which is kind of cool, because, um, I mean, there is plenty of Hellenized or Hellenistic factions in Rome Total War. But um, I like historical accuracy, but I don't actually mind them breaching a little bit with Egypt, to be honest. Although I do think chariots are too powerful. 
Um, here my ally makes a bit of a blunder and um, gets too caught up on these Pharaoh's guards. Um, so I'm going to have to rush quickly. Um, this guy's uh, much too far back. So I'm going to have to rush quickly here and try and catch them out. Um, but, but yeah, I think it's kind of cool and also annoying at the same time with Egypt. Um, I like having to fight. I like chariots as another um, opponent to the to the game, but I do think they're too powerful. Um, the way in which they're represented, anyway. So I'm waiting to use my light lances any way I can. So um, my um, royal pikemen will make pretty short work of Desert Axemen and Pharaoh's Guard. Um, I, I really like Royal Pikeman. Very cool unit. Love the big shield. Probably unrealistic though, because um, I'm pretty sure they didn't use the big shield. Too big to use in the um, Macedonian style phalanx. But it looks good. Um, so, uh, plenty of um, Egyptian deaths going down here. And I'm going to hammer an anvil with my lances here. And that'll route his as mean effectively. And as you can see, it's pretty much the Egyptian forces defeated. Um, so, uh, not a bad game there, I don't think. I'll just speed her up to the end. And there you go, there's a clear victory. 1,595 men, 1,733 kills, 1,167 men remaining. Q had 1,330, had 1,054 kills, and 1,057 men remaining. So we pretty much destroyed without any real major losses. Mike the Great had 1,518, 433 kills, and 62 men remaining. Durandal, 1,421, and 334 kills, and 89 men remaining. Statistically, um, big kills for Royal Pikemen, Cretan archers, got heaps. Uh, Standard archers did quite a few before they got destroyed, but it's fine. My Lion Lance is 231, 150. But um, mostly, the, everything came together nicely, as you can see with my allies, guys. Uh, his companion cabs got all his kills, and his archers. His Pikemen didn't even get in the battle, really. So anyway, um, great game to Q, Mike the Great, and Durandal. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon next time.